Hello everyone, my name is Ilya and I am delighted to welcome you to the Arctic 3D section of the 3D Experience virtual event platform. Being a long-time 3D Experience partner, we understand that there is one particular aspect which stands out the most when it comes to Arctic and SolidWorks customers. We all appreciate complexity. Just like the professional SOLIDWORKS users are always ready to take on any engineering challenge, we, in Arctic 3D, never shy away from the most ambitious 3D scanning projects. To name a few, how about a full-sized air rescue helicopter, scanned from skid to blades, and every single exterior detail in between. All the 3D scanning was carried out on-site in an aircraft hangar taking less than 11 hours of in total for both scanners used for the job. Then the scans were transformed into an exceptionally lifelike 3D model of the helicopter. The process data was then ready for a variety of aerospace applications from reverse engineering to inspection, aerodynamic analysis and more. If it is not impressive enough, uh, our portfolio can also boast a scan of the world's largest blast furnace gas engine. A full-size scan of a 26 meters long gas machine made possible by two ATTACK scanners and our powerful 3D scanning software, Arctic Studio. With a gigantic engine 3D scanned, this data can now be used to restore some missing parts and preserve it in its current state. So, even if it loses its shape with time, it will still be possible to go back to this 3D model and use it for restoration purposes. As you can see, at the heart of the successful attack and SOLIDWORKS integration, there is exceptional accuracy and resolution of our scanners, robustness of our processing algorithms and, of course, abundance and quality of the SOLIDWORKS 3D modeling features. As a result, these fascinating projects very often become the reference for your engineering ventures in SOLIDWORKS and turn into beautiful parametric 3D models. Unlike many other solutions on the market, we didn't take the road of a dedicated SOLIDWORKS plugin. Instead, through the use of the SOLIDWORKS API, we created a sort of transferring channel which made it possible to continuously send different types of datasets from Arctic Studio to SOLIDWORKS and utilize this data for reverse engineering and 3D modeling purposes. I'll show you how it's done in a minute, but for now, here's the list of objects that can be transferred this way. First off, meshes. The digital representation of real-world object after it's been 3D scanned is a polygonal mesh. In case of Arctic Studio, it is going to be a highly detailed and optimized triangular surface, which can easily be sent to SOLIDWORKS pretty much through the click of just one button. Outer surfaces. In Arctic Studio, you can convert the mesh into a cut surface using the outer surfacing functionality. The only thing that you need to think of is the number of patches on a resulting surface. Then one click and the whole object surface or a part thereof will be transformed into CAD. As you may know, this sort of transformation works the best on the organic shapes and it is not the best solution when it comes to accurate reverse engineering. However, many engineers prefer this type of transformation for the general scene and then more elaborate extraction for the intricate areas that are being reverse engineered. Primitive cut shapes and cut models. As I will show you in a minute, Arctic Studio can accurately extract primitive cut shapes from your meshes, which can be further used for the proper alignment and final geometry generation. Spheres, cylinders, cones, freeforms, all these shapes can be easily sent to SOLIDWORKS. Moreover, if you happen to use our shape generating functionality, such as Boolean operations, you can export these proper CAD models, as well as imported and modified CAD models too. Artex Studio features a set of instruments that allow users to create an intersection line between a mesh 
and the number of planes. Artic Studio enables users to have full control over positions of the cutting planes and allows them to extract needed sections with remarkable precision. These are the best reference for further sketching and extrude, revolve or loft operations. These four groups of entities represent a sufficient set of information about your model and will be a fully comprehensive reference when performing reverse engineering in SOLIDWORKS. I would also like to bring to your attention to the fact that we don't need any extra plugins to be able to create, export and 3D model using the entities that I have just described. Certain workflows require additional software to be added into the pipeline, but the scenario that we will keep talking about doesn't include anything but Attic Studio and SOLIDWORKS. Now let me guide you through the entire scanning, processing and 3D modeling workflow. For the sake of demonstration, let's say we need to reproduce an old and broken flange so that it could be modified and reintroduced to the machine. When it comes to the scanner, Ataclio was a pretty obvious choice here. There are six scanners in our product line at the moment. And Ataclio is a perfect scanner for the job. It's got a huge field of view, fully mobile, meaning that there's no wires wrapping around the item, and HD mode to boost resolution and shiny surfaces reconstruction. To cover the object surface, in its entirety. I quickly create three scans. The outer side, the inner side and one auxiliary scan that captures both sides to ensure proper alignment. It doesn't take longer than just a few minutes to cover the whole surface of the item with its intricate details and shiny black surfaces. Once the scanning is done, I'm processing the raw data from the scanner to the computer via a wireless protocol and ready to take a close look at the results. We will begin with erasing everything that we don't need. Normally, when we scan an item, we also capture some unnecessary data, such as background or other objects that happen to get into the field of view. If we don't need them, we get rid of them. Having done that, we align our scans together. This step can be considered situational because in some cases your project will be made of just one scan and in others you will use outer line, which allow you to skip this step entirely. The next step is arguably the most important one, as it defines accuracy and resolution of your final mesh. We call this step global registration and it is in charge of positioning every single frame in your project very precisely with respect to the rest of the frames. After that we are ready to select one of the three types of fusion algorithms and triangulate our raw data into a fine polygonal mesh. The polygon count of our mesh can normally be reduced to a certain extent without losing the finest geometrical features. So that is what we are going to do in this case. Technically, we are ready to start extracting shapes, but before we do so, let's apply a texture. It is not something that we normally do for reverse engineering projects, but in some cases texture can also play a role for reference when figuring out proper cutting plane position. Not to mention that it may help understand the true nature of some artifacts on the mesh. First. Let me show you how exportable are the surfacing function in Artic Studio. We will go for 20,000 patches in this particular example to highlight the fine details of the surface. The resulting model is a CAD surface, but not a parametric one. It can be used for most of the CAD operations in SOLIDWORKS, but is not really accurate. Now let's start extracting all the necessary geometry. We will begin with a plane, which is going to be a base element there. For any primitive extraction, we have a number of selection tools available. In this particular case, I'm using the so-called segment brush. One click on a surface and a moment for the algorithm to analyze curvature of the adjacent areas. 
The second primitive that I will extract is this cylindrical part of the flange. Segment brush. One stroke of the brush and I've got the fitting area that can be expanded further if needed. I'll stop here for primitives, but just for the record we could also extract freeform surfaces, cones, toruses and spheres. Before sending these datasets into SOLIDWORKS, let's create some cross-sections. They will be our foundation for reverse engineering and a main reference for sketching. To extract the general shape, I'll create two cross-sections using the planes of the coordinate systems as a reference for the cutting planes. I can extract as many sections as the project requires. All of them will be saved and just sit there waiting for their turn to be exported or examined. It's time to bring SOLIDWORKS into play. The first Attic Studio object that I'm going to transfer will be the mesh itself. I will export it, just to have it around in the software, making sure everything is aligned with the source model. I can export as many meshes as I need, one after another at different stages of the reverse engineering process. Then let's export the two primitives that we extracted. Both the plane and the cylinder are exported very quickly. As of now, we will keep the outer surface in Attic Studio as we don't actually need it in SOLIDWORKS and move on to the sections. I will export both of the sections we created. As you can see, along with the sections, Attic Studio exports the cutting planes, which we will need a bit later for sketching. Also, I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that in the model manager each imported contour is presented by a separate entity. Now, We've got all we need at this point. In case we need any more data extracted from the original model, we can always get back to Attic Studio and export any data additionally. Let's start from the general shape of the flange. I will use the first section I made to create a profile. We've got everything here to start sketching. The section plane as well as the reference line. I will carefully build my sketch around the scanned lines, using proper drawing tools and make sure dimensioning makes sense, always keeping the design intent in mind. Geometrical constraints are of great help here. It is important to understand that the scanned surface is never perfect. If it was, we wouldn't have to do reverse engineering to begin with, probably. For us, it means that design intent is paramount and the reference like should not be used as is. To create the solid base of the part, I will use Revolution. It is by no means the final model. It still lacks fillets and some other geometrical features. I will create another sketch to punch the holes at the connecting base of the item. We have 11 holes here with slightly different steps between them, but identical diameter. Just like with previous sketching session, we should be very mindful of the actual design intent and the mesh may deviate from the physical model in certain areas. A quick extrude cut for holes and another one to cut out a section of the base. Here's the preliminary results of our reverse engineering. Now I'm going to get back to Attic Studio, extract some extra data, export it to the same project in SOLIDWORKS and add additional geometrical features. That's about it. As you can tell, in this project I was focusing on speed rather than accuracy, but the result is still great. To check the deviation between the original mesh and the CAD model, let's input the letter into Attic Studio and run 3D Compare Analysis. You can see that the shapes obviously deviate, but this deviation is within reasonable limits and could be easily decreased by more thorough sketching and 3D modeling. As I mentioned in the beginning, this way of integration allows fairly simple reverse engineering of basic geometries. For more advanced parts, you may want to take advantage of the Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS plugin. 
It is a great addition to your default SOLIDWORKS functionality that brings in a whole new tab of reverse engineering features and enables you to reconstruct even more challenging scanned shapes in CAD. With every new iteration of our software, we improve our synergy with SOLIDWORKS. Relying on our own expertise and feedback of our customers, we keep developing new features that complement the SOLIDWORKS reverse engineering pipeline and make our users' experience better and better. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to contact us through artic3d.com. That's it for now. Thank you and see you next time.